lady here. Her name is uh, Ramona Shelburne. She is an NBA analyst, insider, friend of all. Thank you for joining us friend here on Coast to Coast. Friend of all, me, me especially. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about what we saw there. Um, do you believe mm -hmm. that LeBron James is jealous of D Wade's hair? A hundred percent. He's broken everybody's hair. Did you see that part where he was like, that's why I put my beard on? That, that's not exactly what so I wanted good. to. I didn't want to go deep into that. No, um, hard-hitting <laughs> journalism. Uh, let's talk about LeBron. Uh, the, whether or not he plays for the season opener, some issues with his ankle injury. What are you hearing about his status? Yeah, it kind of sounds like he's not. Like, I mean, they're really putting that out there that, like Ty Lue just said, he's not sure where he stands on this. And I think this just speaks to where the NBA is in general, where, like, Kawhi is going to sit out a game or two. Like, LeBron, maybe he's going to sit out a first game here. I mean, this is the regular season, and we're all hyped for the beginning of yeah. the regular season, but it's a long I, haul. I Nobody's that. rushing back. I understand that, but fan home, I know you guys will be disappointed <laughs> if you don't get to see LeBron and Kyrie meet in this friendly or not friendly territory. Let's move on. Rockets Warriors, another team that we want to mm -hmm. look at, specifically the Rockets. The big question about that is how do James Harden and CP3 play together so talk to me about how they plan to use those two on the floor yeah they're not going to play together very much like that's uh, oh. the answer is that they will play together at the beginning of games a little bit in the middle and then at the end but mike d'antoni's initial his initial concept of how they're going to play is they're not going to share the court all that much oh, because well, who did, how does that break down in minutes because they both want their minutes ramona that's right and but i think it's also role so when cp3 is on the floor with james harden you're going to see a lot of James Harden as the point guard and CP3 sitting up as a, a three-point shooter on the outside. It's like, have you ever thought of Chris Paul as a spot-up shooter? It's no. not really his best role. Now, sometimes Chris will take the ball up and he'll be the facilitator and James will be the shooter. Sure. But for the most part, this is James Harden's team and Chris Paul is joining it. So I think this is going to be an interesting way of moving all these guys together. Now, another, another thing to watch is they're going to go extremely small. Like, you'll see them sometimes where P.J. Tucker is going to be the okay. with, with center. Hey. And, like, Chris Paul, if he's out there with James Harden, he's pretty small, too. Okay, I just, I, and I'm going to move on, but I don't see that mm -hmm. making them happy. You're saying they're not going to play together. Fine, that makes sense. But how do you give them enough minutes, feed their egos, make them happy so they feel like they're contributing? I'm going to leave it right there. There's a head coach for that. I don't know anything <laughs> about it. He was the coach of the year. Yeah, he's so, all right, it's on you, dog. <laughs> you got it. Uh, also, questions about Lonzo Ball mm -hmm. status for the Lakers opener. What are you hearing about that? Yeah, I spoke to Magic Johnson over the weekend, and he essentially said, look, they weren't rushing him back. It, you know, as long as he gets in a good practice over the weekend, he feels good going through this week. They wanted to save him for open night so they didn't want him coming back Friday against the Clippers in a preseason game where nobody was playing when you're just gonna play the Clippers again on Thursday this gives right. you extra time so they're expecting him to play on Thursday and play some major minutes I said this in a tweet and I'm gonna say it on TV I am excited about the situation in Los Angeles let's just go big picture here okay the Sparks although they did not win the championship they made it to the they finals two years in a row that's great then we have the Dodgers I mean and they look I don't want to jinx it Shane shout out to our mm -hmm. camera guy Shane he's he's already planning for the World Series. I don't, don't want to. Do I don't that. want to get there, Shane. Don't I told like Shane that. not to it's do been that. Twenty nine years. You can't get ahead of yourself. Uh, and we're excited about the Lakers, <laughs> but let's stay with the Dodgers. I know that you talked about what, about Vince Scully, how he narrated mm -hmm. your life. I know you're a diehard oh, yeah. fan, but you also covered the first two games. Talk to me about something that feels very destined about this team. Well, I think what was interesting last night is like it was the 29th anniversary of Kirk Gibson's home run, oh, right? Oh and there's only been two walk-off postseason home runs in Dodger history. Kirk Gibson hit one, Justin Turner hit the other last night. And it felt like, you know, you just want to put those two things together, right? Because it felt like that moment when Justin Turner got up there, that you know, John Lackey on the mound, and, and it felt like that because there was some synchronicity and there was there, it had had that parallel with Gibson. But you have to remember, when Vin Scully called Kirk Gibson's game, he said, in a year that has been so improbable, the impossible has happened. This year has not been improbable for the Dodgers. They were the best team in baseball. They have the highest payroll in the league. Like, this oh, was supposed to happen. And Kirk Gibson, like, no offense to Justin Turner, it was a fantastic home run. Yeah, Kirk Gibson couldn't walk. walk. Kirk Gibson couldn't walk. Like, it was a big stretch okay. for him to even be on the roster for the World Series. Nobody thought he could even play. So Justin Turner's been their best hitter all year. It'd be more like if Corey Seager came off the DL and okay. talked his way in there with his bad back. If you want to come in here him. and put some cold water sorry, on my warm, my warm, fuzzy thoughts, <laughs> that's just fine, Ramona. But how are the Dodgers looking? Well, look, what do they do when they go to Chicago? Oh, if their bullpen stays as good as it's been, then they'll be just fine. Okay. Like, the, the, as much as everyone wants to talk about Puig, Puig had three walks last night. Uh-huh. Did you ever think you'd see the day? No. 
Like, I never thought I'd see the day that Yasiel Puig walked three times in a game. But it's a, it's a credit to his change at the plate and his improved discipline at the plate. But, like, if they're bull, it's really been the story of their bullpen. The Nobody story of the bullpen. Ramona Shelburne with her, her very fair <laughs> and objective analysis, folks. But I believe Sorry. deep down Sorry. she is a Dodgers fan. She a little water. Yeah, a little water. Uh, David, I'll send it. All right, Carrie, former Augusta National Chairman Billy Payne retired back in August after presiding over 11 Masters. Today is the first day on the job for Payne's replacement, Fred Ridley, a former U.S. amateur champ and past president of the USGA. Ridley joined Augusta National back in 2000. He'd been chairman of the tournament's competition committee since 2007. He is the seventh Augusta National Chairman in the club's history and the first to have played in the Masters doing so three straight years back in the 1970s. The last U.S. amateur champ to not turn professional, Ridley, was also elected president of the USGA for 2004 and 2005. And he had this statement today, to become chairman of Augusta National and the Masters is beyond humbling. I stand ready to embrace the responsibilities that come with this important position, strengthened by the lessons the sport teaches and the example of those who have provided leadership to me. I pledge to use my deep-rooted respect for the customs and traditions they established to further elevate our club and tournament while continuing their mission of contributing to the development of the sport around the world. Colin Kaepernick's latest challenge to the NFL is a claim of collusion among owners to keep him out of the league.